Hello and welcome to learning BricsCAD using blocks in your drawing. In this lesson we're going to talk about how you can use blocks to um, for geometry that is uh, reused. So standard things such as kitchen ranges or symbols indicating a kitchen sink, doors, windows, all of these types of objects or can, can be used as blocks in a drawing and thus easy to repeat in the same drawing as well as other external drawings. So if I list those two objects we can see that one of the objects, so in the case of the geometry representing the range, that was a simple lightweight polyline whereas the uh, geometry representing the kitchen sink was indeed a, um, a block. So the way we access blocks is using the insert command. So on the cursor, on the quad cursor menu, I'm going to launch the insert command. And what I'm going to do here is select a block definition from the name drop-down list. So let's talk a little bit about the options here when you're in the insert block command. You have the option of specifying the insertion point on screen or manually enter the X, Y, Z coordinate values. Moving on to scale, again, the same functionality, you have the option to either specify on screen or enter the coordinates. And then finally, for rotation, you're either going to specify on screen or the angle. In this example, we're going to use a specify on screen option. So I'm going to select that and leave everything else unchecked. And now I'm going to use basic snap tracking to locate the geometry. Well, it would help if I uh, turned on my midpoint object snap first. And using snap tracking here, we'll define the geometric center of that rectangle and locate the point there. And the block has been inserted. So as we explore this geometry, we can use the quad cursor. We can see that it was placed on layer zero. That was the current layer at the time. We're going to select the, layer, the fixture layer, and you can see the block updates to represent the uh, correct layer properties. Now we're going to change our uh, current layer to title, and we're going to repeat the insert command. So again, right click in the graphics window, click insert, and this time we're going to choose a uh, block that represents or that is used for titles uh, or view titles. So again, leaving the options as they are, specifying on screen, we're going to click OK and select the insertion point. And then you'll notice on the command line, we're prompt for the view number and then the, the name of drawing views. So these are attributes which are defined inside of the block. Think of an attribute as a small piece of metadata that can be associated to objects in your drawing. So in this recent insertion of the view title, we were prompted for the attribute values via, via the command line. This uh, functionality is controlled by the ATT DIA system variable. And so if you were to enter that system variable on the command line or change it in the settings dialog box, it's currently set to off, which causes the prompts to appear on the command line. Setting that value to one will allow us to be prompted for the um, attribute values via the, the dialog box. So having restarted, we'll click OK. And now I'll place the uh, view title and you'll notice the edit attribute dialog box appears. And now we can enter or change the attribute values by entering new values in the dialog box. So for this exercise, the attribute or the view number will be set to one. The name of the drawing view will be plan view. And we'll leave no scale set to no scale and click OK. And then if we zoom in, we can see essentially the exact same block has been used, but it's just a different way of answering the prompting uh, attribute question. So again, ATTDIA for 
one equals uh, the dialog box will appear for attributes and zero the dialog box will not appear. So it really depends on your preference and what you're trying to do. So now that we've inserted an at a block with attributes, what do we do if we need to change that data? So very easily just double click the block with attributes and the attribute editor will appear at which point you simply select the tag that you want to edit and enter a new value. So in this example we're going to change the no scale value to be equal to verify dimensions on the CAD drawing or file and click OK and then you can see the data is updated in the block. Okay, moving on, the next thing we're going to do is set the uh, layer for doors or to be the current layer and we're going to take a look at inserting dynamic blocks into BricsCAD. So a dynamic block is a, a special type of block that allows you to change its configuration after it's been inserted. So starting the insert command and choosing the door imperial option, I'm going to specify the insertion point on uh, screen, but the scale we want to be one, and I want to control the rotation as well. So selecting the entity snap endpoint, I'll rotate the door into position. Now what's unique about dynamic blocks is once a dynamic block has been created, you have the ability of changing its configuration. So selecting a dynamic block causes a series of glyphs or small icons to appear on the block itself. Choosing this icon gives me a shortcut menu that allows me to change to different visible configurations. So in this example, we've opened the door 90 degrees. The other grips or glyphs at, that appear you will, uh, will offer additional functionality for editing or modifying the dynamic block. So here I'm adjusting the thickness of the door. Okay, panning up to the next area of the drawing, we're going to continue working with dynamic blocks. Just going to do a different example. So again, starting the insert command, the last block is already chosen. So we'll select the insertion point using our entity object snaps and we'll place the door in this general location on the, um, the wall and then rotate it accordingly. And here we've actually placed it incorrectly. So using the grips, I can flip the direction of the door. I can also move its insertion point and again change its thickness as well. So again once the dynamic block is inserted you can select it to reveal the various glyphs or, or grips that appear on the, uh, the block icon and then selecting those grips will have a different effect. So in this example I'm going to open it to a 60 degree uh, opening and um, if I were to use these other uh, grips on the insertion block, you can see the visual effect it has. So in this case, we're changing the swing of the door. And all of this can be done when you're defining that dynamic block. Okay, next we'll take a look at how we can uh, utilize external drawing files as blocks in our drawings. So the first thing that we're going to do is change our current layer and make that the shoe store layout layer. And then we're going to open a file. This file will be located along with the other data sets you would have installed at the beginning of this course. And we're going to select the file called Basketball Stool. Click Open. And we're opening this file simply to demonstrate that it's a series of simple arcs and circles and lines. Nothing special about the geometry. Notice that it is currently residing on layer zero. Now 
in our other drawing, our exercise drawing, we want to make use of this geometry in multiple places of our, for our current drawing. So we'll use the insert command to do that. Notice here that there are no blocks in this drawing definition. So this drawing essentially is only the geometry representing the block and the standard layer zero. Now, when we execute the insert command, this time we'll choose the browse button and we're going to browse to the location of our dataset files for this course. And again, we're going to locate the file called basketball stool and then we're going to click open using the same options we're going to insert uh, specify the insertion point on screen we want the scale to be uh, also give us the option to specify on screen as well as the uh, rotation we'll turn that off because the geometry is round so um, let's go ahead and insert this here it's asking for the insertion point and we're going to simply pick a point on the drawing as shown. And then you'll notice that as I move my cursor outward, I'm scaling the uh, or setting the scale factor independently in the X and Y axis. So because that option was set to specify on screen, here what I want to do is I want to set both X and Y to 24, and that will scale the geometry as shown. Now you'll notice the the block comes in as a single entity and it has the color properties of the current layer. This completes the lesson on using blocks in BricsCAD.